Hey everybody, it's your boy Gotham City RK. Back at it again. I want to give a shout out to my boy One Up Underground for the last week's show. Put me on. Appreciate him having me on his show. Hopefully that we don't work with him later, you know, in the future months. Uh, same thing with my boy Swap919. Hopefully he'll make some content down the road. I'm looking forward to seeing more of his stuff. Uh, long low, where's your stuff at, brother? I need to see more of your stuff. I we definitely didn't see your room in the last couple months, but I'll hopefully make some content. And a shout out to everybody that's in the state of Texas, you know, all my brothers that's deployed over there in, in um from Fort Bliss. I want to give him a shout out and hopefully see him home soon enough. So let's get to it. If you look at my thumbnail, uh, basically, I have, I've been trying to think of a topic that is unique and something that we're not talking about right now is why are the diehards leaving the home arcade community? And I'm going to put my slide up and we're going to start with the godfather of home arcade, Glenn. Um, I, I think mainly a lot of reasons is that Facebook page that was a debacle. And, you know, just give you a little background for Glenn. Glenn is the OG. I mean, he is the godfather of this field. So for me personally, when you say home arcade, you would say Glenn, because Glenn has made products for this line. He's made a GRS spinner, track ball, the, the Tron stick. Like he has basically made things for these products for the arcade one up community to be perfected for the gen ones and gen twos. Plus, he was working side by side with Mike Michael B uh, with the VP of RK One Up, John D. And um, as well as the president, and they worked and collab really well together. And for some reason, I guess RK wanted to want to go in a different direction. They wanted the page that Glenn had made. He was supporting the community where a lot of people show up their rooms, show up their purchases, you know, tradings. And because of his page, a lot of other pages spun up from him. And I guess. RK One Up is going in a new direction where they want a lot more positivity for their page. And this is the page that Glenn asked RK One Up, could he do to support their product? They were supportive. There were admins on there just like um, Glenn was at the time. And I guess they wanted to go in a different direction and they wanted to take Glenn off the page. And Glenn was like, this is my page. I'm the one that controls this. So they went and made a similar page to what Glenn had, and which it didn't make no sense. And then with the lawsuits going on with the Tron stick, because Glenn felt that they were they copied his style, his 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 patent. And there's a lot of different elements that go in this. Glenn, after the debacle with the Facebook page going the way it is and the lawsuits and all that, Glenn said he is done and he's tired of it. Like when you see him on podcasts, pot, like shows and podcasts later on after that, he's been non-existent. He don't even talk about RK one up no more. And if he does, it's not under the best light or he doesn't speak of it at all. And to me, this is where the ship doesn't have his captain. And this is, the, you know, this is the reason why a lot of us has hopped into it because of individuals like Glenn and people that hopped in the community behind Glenn. So with Glenn not being a part of it anymore, you know, now we're trying to advocate to other individuals. Hopefully they can keep the shit at float. So let's get to the next one. So it was supposed to be three of them up here, but unfortunately, I couldn't find a third person that was in the same time frame. So forgive me for the three wise men, but two of them are in here. And when you look at Cool Toys, Cool Toys was one of the biggest advocators in this field during the first two or three years. He was the reason why I started watching a lot of the content on YouTube at the time. And when I turned it on, he spoke highly of the products. He had it, he had his issues, but he spoke highly of it. 
And because of him, it was the reason why I started buying more other products. Because when he did his announcement, he had his podcast, I was glued to the phone. I had my military uniform, I'd be in a motor pool, or I was in the meeting, or I was in the office doing some work. Or I just, you know, I had some stressful out days. His content gave me some relief throughout the day. And I was looking forward to that. Unfortunately, he has stepped away from it. He has a new a new baby. Shout out to his new arrival. He's now focused on his uh, martial arts, which I know he's been really good at it. Uh, he's just been more of a family man, and he's been focusing on that. You don't really speak. I haven't seen him in like over a year speak about his content, the content of the home arcade community. I don't see him saying anything. So he's kind of like a ghost. I know that Michael B has reached out to him. Console Kids has reached out to him. I know a lot of the different people has reached out to him and he just haven't really trying to get back into it. So he's just kind of like off to his own, off in his own space. And then now we got Retro Ralph. Retro Ralph has been one of the biggest supporters in this field. Him, he has done a show with Council Kids. Shout out to Council Kids with the One Up show. Um, they used to put out, I think, bi weekly podcasts every two weeks or whenever a new product would hit. And they would speak highly of it. I remember the first time I watched the One Up show, it was a great show. It wasn't the best, but it was there. It was great to see that the community was going forward with the product. And I was glad to, to see that the, 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 that the, the company was moving forward and there were going to be supporters around it. Now, at this time, I was still in the military, so I wasn't thinking about doing no podcast. <laughs> and and uh, I mean, that was not on my mind, but I was glad there were other people promoting the product. So that way I knew it was coming. And they were supporting Wave 2 to Wave 3. And Wave 3 being the Wave 3 would be the biggest. They went to CES. Uh, uh, they went to um, a number of different shows where RK Warner was putting out their products. And we seen they were the, the forefront of RK Warner. When you say RK Warner, you had to say Cool Toys. You had to say Console Kits. They were great in the field. And I appreciate everything they did. But to see Retro Rob jump out of it because of all the chaos and for what he's spoke about, that chat room with the Illuminati one day popped out. Someone put the chat room on YouTube and the community exploded. And then the comments that were coming out of it and the things that Retro Ralph was seeing in it, he said he didn't want no parts of it. And he is basically took three steps back where he doesn't even support their products anymore. You know, he might do a cab here and there, but I don't see him talking about their products anymore. He went back to actual arcades, arcade cabinets, full size. And you see his channel and his brand has basically moved on from RK one of as a whole. And, and it's sad to see one of our three wise men don't want to be, well, rather both of them don't want to be a part of it anymore. And it's sad that, you know, when you think about what the home arcade community was, these two gentlemen right here, what are biggest advocates for it and no longer a part of it anymore because of all the turmoil and all the toxicity that we are seeing in this in this community. So hopefully one day they'll come back to the community. But right now, I'm, I hope I wish them both success in their new fields and their new endeavors. But it's just sad not to see them anymore. Let's move on to the next slide. Now we got the OGs. The OGs is like my... Like they were the pinnacle of wave three. They were like at the end of wave two, coming in eight, wave three, and Michael B and P Dubs. P Dubs kind of, I saw him kind of like during wave two. He did a couple more combat videos. Uh, Michael B, I seen him with a couple um, cabs in the beginning, but I didn't see a lot of videos from him right away. So I didn't really click on him until like mostly wave three. And then I kind of, Saw him mostly with the legacies. He he was more predominant on the legacies and mines. So we're gonna start with P Dubs. P Dubs is is one of the founding 
founding members of the Super Game Room Dudes. And for him to come on a podcast and say he's not going to support the product anymore because of all the issues it's having over the years, it said something because he's not wrong. He's absolutely right. And to see them continue to make the same Pac-Man, the same Street Fighter, the same, it's like they keep coming with different ways to make it a certain cabinet and there's no improvements or there's issues with each cabinet. It, it basically, he is not wrong for wanting to step away from it for a little bit. He has not cold turkey. He has not went through rehab. He is not. He has, he is supporting of the product, but he's not going to buy the product until he sees something different. And he has basically voiced that sentiment forward to the community as well as all the ownership of these companies. Getting to Michael B. Michael B. has been one of the biggest advocates in this field. He's the one that basically had one of the largest rooms, one of the largest rooms. I didn't say he had the largest room. He had one of the largest largest rooms. He basically promoted their product. He used to have yearly updates of his room. He used to put out videos for that, which it has done really well. I think he got like one video made over like over 20. He had two videos made over 20K over viewership. And it's not bad. This is for the home arcade. But for him to come on this year on several podcasts and said, I'm clearing out my room. I'm selling cabs to make room for my son for they get, my kids can have a playroom. I found that to be some BS. <laughs> why would you like, why would you go all out your way to buy cabs to now sell them? Your whole room, your whole purpose was to make a genie K, a uh, a RK room, multiple rooms, and all of a sudden that you now want to make room for your children. I find that suspect in the hood. No cat, there's there's cat to that, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I don't believe that's all what he's saying. And I'm not debating what type of man he is, in contrary, because he has a right to do whatever he wants with his room. But I've seen this man get ripped up for things that wasn't even in his own control. I've seen this man got a, the sense to cab. That was one of them where console kids came on the show and said, well, you know, if you get a certain amount of dollars, I'll hook you up. I'll match you dollar for dollar. And basically, the whole community came out and supported him. And we had people in the, in the, in the chat rooms and basically tag his page saying the, the taste distaste they had for what he did and he didn't do anything i remember watching that show people just his community is strong he has a very large community of supporters that actually enjoy his content he's actually a cool dude what i've seen i don't know him personally but i've seen that he has a great support he has a great support around his channel and for people to hate on him and not appreciate what he that he thought he was taking advantage of them, of the people that was giving money. I remember him speaking and saying, please stop supporting, sending money, stop sending endorsements, stop sending charity, stop sending, stop sending funds to my channel. And people were still doing it. I remember he, I think he made like six, I think he made like four to six hundred dollars that night off or for donations. And it was crazy that people were getting at him. So what I'm where I'm getting at is that I have seen this man go through a lot of highs and a lot of lows. And for him to want to step away from all that, I don't I don't really truly understand. But for him to sell cabinets off is showing there's something more to this picture that we're all not paying attention to. So and then for P dubs to not want to contribute more money to this field and they're advocating to other things and both of them are starting to buy real pinball cabinets. Now, if you have not noticed in the last few weeks, the community has basically shifted to buy pinball, real pinball. These are like five to 10 to $15,000 cabinets. I'm not saying it's too rich for my blood, but I, I'm not I don't, I'm not tech savvy to buy a pinball. And I like virtual, I like VPEN. So I think you can get more of your money off VPEN than the actual pinball. But I heard pinball keeps value very little things keep value and pinball does. So for those two individuals to basically sell off or basically not buy or 
basically not buying anything at this point. And that, and we're right now we're in wave five, so we're in deluxe. None of them are picking up no well, P does bought a he actually got a new uh more combat cabinet. And his distaste of his video, I'm gonna let you watch his video. You need to go and check out his channel and let him. But I haven't seen Michael B buy one yet. Not one. He bought his Godzilla pinball, but that was it. <laughs> and that's kind of that's kind of natural for him. So <sighs> it just it's just interesting. All to the next slide. So now I, I'm do I feel that the diehards are leaving the community because of RK wanna? Yes and no. I would say yes because of all the shilling around the product. And I'm not I'm not here to call people out. That's not what I'm here to do. But I feel like with all the chaos that's around John D and the RK wanna, it, it definitely contributes a factor to this. Like we have seen during the Red Cross, which it was a fire cell, but they try to rebrand it to something else. We've seen John D come on and make comments, which a lot of community members was not trying to appreciate for him. And he was he was on a hiatus for a year. You know, he was on his Michael Jordan sabbatical. <laughs> I have seen lack of transparency for their products. I've seen the 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 quality of the products it has got better but then some things just vert right right back to it uh -huh. i seen that that luminati chat room pop up i seen favoritism to certain people like if you don't not get advocated by certain people in this community you will not grow your brand as as well as everyone else and i'm just calling it the way i see it like to me, I say like this: if I if I can get my subscriber base up, great. If I can't, I do this just for the fun of it. I enjoy it. I just deserve it. I do buy the cabinets for me. It's it's just a nostalgia thing for me. I'm not doing this for clickbait. I'm not doing this for money. But some people are, and you can kind of see it that it evolves around John D and the RK One Up community as a family as a whole. There are clicks in the groups. In RK one of them. You see that with IRK. You see that with Ad Games. You see that with Unico with the MVSX. You see this with other products. There are clicks that will, are gatekeepers in this field, in this community right now. This RK one of key. And they know who they are. And I'm not here to shout anybody's name out because I don't want to get called out for nothing. Because I'm not scared or nervous. I just feel that it's not my place because I'm not a female. I drink I drink coffee. I don't drink, I don't sip tea. So we'll just leave it as that. But when I feel like when you look at RK one up, you look you think of John D. Do I feel like the heart the diehards are leaving because of him? Yes, because I they have spoken distaste for him and his company, and and this shows in various podcasts along the way. This is why some of them are leaving. So. I'm not going to be surprised if Michael B, P Dove, Detroit Love, <laughs> and others start disappearing from it too. And there, even though there's a new wave of content creators, but these are the OGs. And you're kind of like, why are they are leaving when they should be sticking around? Because we only got but so many titles and there's a lot more still coming. And we still need them in the field to advocate for these titles. Why are they all trying to move on from it? Hmm. This is the question y'all need to start asking them. But I'm going to leave it as that. And we're going to move on to the next topic. Home Arcade. Do I believe the diehards are leaving because of the Home Arcade community? Hell yeah. The fucking shilling, the the, the bitterness, the, the, the fighting. Who's going to get the first one to, to put the new product so they can get clickbait? all day so they can get the, the max amount of subs. I've seen this. The favoritism is ridiculous. And it is ugly to me. And it is disgusting that we're all we know these are toys but we're, we're acting like children. Most of us are in our 40s, 50s, and 60s. Got some people in their 30s. And I have never seen so much hate towards individuals because you know one person might have sprung a last year. 
and my got a thousand views within a seven month timeline. Some people have been doing this for, for two, three years. Are you doing this to be liked or are you doing this so you can be appreciated? To me, you should be doing this because you enjoy it. But other people are in this situation just because I've seen gatekeepers around who should be the one promoting these products, who should not be allowed to speak, who should be on certain people's channels. I, you know what? People, people like what they like. There's nothing you can do about it. Unfortunately, this is what it is. And, and it's sad and it sucks. And unfortunately, this is where we're coming to. You know, I, do I feel that the home community, home arcade community is going to destroy what is being built? Yes. I feel like when you look at new people in this industry, like She Lion, um, UGA, SWAT, one of Underground, myself, Mo, you know, we're looking at the new generation of individuals and it seems like it's more chaotic amongst this this generation than the last two and i'm noticing that more and more than anything yeah even i i noticed like some people dislike corner k because he got kudos from the um super game room dudes his channel has grown and and i mean i i'm i'm proud that he is definitely winning but there's some people that hated on him, and there's no reason for that. I mean, there could be it could be comments on the way he got him, but but I don't feel that he did anything wrong. He he would have never did anything that anyone else would have did. I feel that you have to give him a lot more credibility than what he is. He chased something that he wanted. He went after it, and it worked. Go and get your go and get your paper, bro. Go and get your paper, brother. So. I don't have an issue with it, but other people do, and it sucks. Like, I just don't understand this. I, I wish a lot of the older content creators were still around, and I'm not talking about the ones I already listed. There were other people I was watching, and they just kind of stopped. They don't buy cabinets anymore. They don't talk about the the community anymore. They don't talk about the products anymore. They just kind of just stepped off. That was it. But it is what it is at the end of the day, and this is where... I'm going to say my piece. When it comes to me, do I feel like the, the diehards are leaving? Yes, slowly. They're leaving like like when I came in the military and there was people that I was fond of and they was in it for a while. They all had to retire or they had to move on with their life. They had to go somewhere else or they just left. And the same thing is happening to them. They're moving on to something else or they're just leaving entirely. And it can be for many reasons. It could be for the toxicity in the community. It could be for the products. It could be for the ownership. It could be for their own personal reasons, like the the the, the, the home arcade community is not what they want to do anymore. And it could be various reasons why they walked away from it. But I feel like all the things I listed are contributing factors to that. And to me, we have to take a step back and stop acting like kids and act like adults and wonder why we all got in this. We're not the PS and Xbox kids. We're the home, we're the arcade kids. We're the ones that went to the arcade with, a, with five, ten bucks. And we stayed in the arcade for hours, put a corner on the glass, you know, we played Moon Patrol, Patman, Space Invaders, Street Fighter, Golden Axe, Outrun, Hang On, uh, Mortal Kombat, you know, Daytona, Cruising, you know, Batman, Superman, you know, Tekken, uh, uh, just a various of games that I can name, uh, you know, Robotron, Smash TV, you know, those kind of games. I feel that we're, why we got in this community because of the nostalgia so we could all talk to each other, have fun with each other because we're older. We shouldn't be fighting and be fighting each other and basically forcing people out of this because we don't like what they say or we don't value their commit their commitment or their comments or their commitment to the to the product. I, at this point, it just makes no sense. I mean, for me, I'm one of the very few black people in this field. Very few. Because when you look at home arcade, it's predominantly, and I hate to say it, it's predominantly white. 
But I can honestly say, well, I got in this is for the nostalgia of it. Not because I remember being poor. My moms didn't have it like that. She didn't. My moms were struggling. Most of these individuals in this field, their parents had money. They, their parents took them to Blockbuster. They took them to to the to the pizza spot where the games were at. They they had money, and to me, they have an education that I don't have. However, I, it wasn't like I was around the video games because I had to do different things to be around it. It wasn't accessible where I was at, especially living in the hood. And the things that I went through. I wouldn't put that on anybody, but where I'm at right now, if I can bring up a new generation of kids to to appreciate what I have, and my cabinet is in the back and the rest of them in the room, I just feel like at some point, where is the common sense that is going to deflect the nonsense? And to me, we have so much nonsense in this field. No one, where's the common sense to understand that? We're all just playing with toys. We're adults. We pay good money. We're all trying to communicate with each other, make each other situation better. We all should be trying to push to encourage and push each other for greatness instead of tearing each other down and trying to push them out of here and be gatekeepers to the situation. So to me, I just don't understand that it just is hurtful and disgusting that we have gotten to this point in five years. Now, do I feel that this community is going to last ten, five more years? It's hard to say. I mean, we have more content creators, which is great. But the ones that made the, the community and the content great, they're walking. And that's what I'm hurting about. I mean, I'm glad for all the new people to hop in. And, you know, you do need more voices in, in the room. But I prefer the ones that been in it from the beginning to stay. And that's hurtful. And to see Glenn, Retro Ralph, Clue Toys to disappear when they're like the founding fathers of this. You might see P does disappear. You might see uh Michael B disappear. You might see a lot more content creators to walk away from this at some point where they do not want to stay a part of this. It is going to be disgusting where this community goes next because at this point to every other owner is about dollars and cents and how many cabinets they push out to walmart best buy uh gamestop uh target and any other company that's willing to purchase these cabinets and put in the inventory the rest of these companies is all about thousand cents it's whether they can go platinum off the product and that's how it is would I like to see more games come out of RK one of? Yes, I would love to. But but that the cost that is gonna hurt the rest of the community and it's gonna hurt everyone else that basically new consumers coming into this product share. So I'm gonna leave it as that. Uh, is your boy Gotham City Arcade, you know, trying out some new stuff. I hope you like the content. If you do, please leave a comment below and Tell me what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.